My name is Henry Boxer. I'm an art dealer specialising in outsider, out brute and visionary art. There are various definitions, but my personal definition would be art created by an individual for an audience of one. So they're working for themselves, they're not looking for an outside audience, which sets it apart from mainstream and other art. Well, the first thing I bought was an, actually a Louis Wayne, and he did a series of cats that as his illness progressed, he was schizophrenic. The, the images split up into a fractal design, a, a psychedelic design. That, that appealed to me at the time because I was 18 years old. I was uh, experimenting with uh, psychedelics such as LSD, POT and what have you. And visually that changes the way you see things. And this was happening to Louis Wayne just through his, his own illness and the other changes in his brain. So he was producing imagery that I could relate to in the late 60s that were produced in, a, in, a, in an asylum in the late 30s. And that was the first piece of art I bought. And then later on I started buying more and more work by people who uh, suffered from mental health problems because I, again I was fascinated by that and that collection grew and I, it suddenly became my livelihood. I think they're usually isolated, living on the margins of society, often obsessive and sometimes the work's discovered many years after they've, they've died and they haven't even shown it to anyone. That's a uh, work by Henry Darger that was found in his home when he died. Uh, Henry Darg is now recognised as probably the most important American self-taught artist. Uh, when he died they discovered 300 watercolours, double-sided watercolours, in his room and it was accompanied by a 15,000 page uh, manuscript, typewritten, which was called The Vivian Girls in the Realms of the Unreal. And that's the longest, uh, as far as I know, work of fiction that's ever been written. Uh, when they told Henry, uh, uh, he was dying, he was on his deathbed, that they discovered these works in his, in his apartment. They asked him what, what should we do to, with them and he said burn them. He was a janitor in Chicago for all of his life and again these works were created in secret in his apartment so they were never seen until the last days of his life. Um, he was a very religious man, he went to church eight times a day. Uh, that works by Malcolm McKesson, he's an artist I discovered uh, 25 years ago um, at, a, at an art fair. His nephew came around with a very small book of drawings and showed me the, the pieces and I was immediately enthralled by the subject matter, very dark and there's obviously a kind of a sexual undertone to all of the drawings. Um, the next day I said, can I come around and see more, more of the work? I went to his, his apartment in New York City and around the apartment, all over the floor, under the bed, on the walls were about five or six hundred drawings, all in ballpoint pen, which he produced secretively in over a period of 10, 15 years. People appreciated the work and the imagery and, and in fact some of them are very, very beautiful. They're, they're, they are dark, but I think people saw them as, as really intrinsic, strange but beautiful objects. And then they've had a need to produce something. It's come from, that's what I love about it, a deep within themselves.